Welcome to a quick tour of some of the exciting features of the new free Autograph 5. It would also be very useful for you to watch the summary video of version 4 as all the topics covered in that video apply equally to version 5. When version 5 starts up, there's a bit more detail now about the two standard and advanced levels of Autograph. Standard has no radians and no calculus. Now when it starts up, now you get the opportunity to log in to your Autograph or Complete Maths account. Complete Maths is the new home of Autograph and in time this will be a, a way to get through to lots of resources. For now I'll just log in and on we go. And what you get now is uh, a nice summary of the various pages of Autograph. You've got the uh, stats page here, the 2D graphing page, the 3D page and the complex numbers page. So let's give you a quick tour now of uh, some of the facilities. These are the different page types we've mentioned and let's have a look at a 2D page. And everything's done through the right click. So you've got whatever you've got selected, nothing in this case. These are the top level objects. Let's enter an equation and type away. So y equals xx, x for x cubed minus 3x minus 1. Now you may notice that the slow plot is on and that's very important. It means it's going to creep across here and you can stop and talk about it and discuss where it's going to hit the x-axis and y-axis and so on. That's the autograph way of plotting graphs. All right, um, let's put some points on. Now these points, remember, you keep putting points on, including on objects, uh, until you go back to select mode. The point mode has been extended. You have the intersections mode now, which is always looking, wait for the little circle. And line segments and also vectors they're quite nice so let's just go a vector from here to here here to here and here to here and let's summarize sum that plus that plus that and put it here and right click vector add vectors and you can see that the sum is the same whatever you do to these it's quite nice so a point on a curve um, we've got point options line options including tangents and so on Create Newton Raphson, that's a nice one. Just see how that works. So in it goes. And the point is, of course, you can move this around and see that it's not always clear which route it's going to end up looking at. And don't forget, you've got always the zoom. Let's have a look at some geometry now. And you'll notice that I've got a, a finished solution here of uh, this particular theorem to do with circles, which is quite nice. And I have another file here, which is the beginnings of it, and I'm going to show you how it all works. So it'd be quite nice to have these two side by side. Now you can do that in the Window menu, Windows, and select Circle 1. You have to press the Control key to do a, a multiple selection. And we want Tower Vertical, and there they are next to each other, which is really nice. Now this is the file I want to start off with, so I'm just going to put it together for you. Um, first of all, on the Axes menu, there is the option to turn labels on or off. Uh, there's lots of times when you don't really want the diagram littered with labels, but on this occasion we certainly do. So I'm going to click that on. Now the first thing I want to do is find the tangent from this point to the circle. So the, the logic of autograph is select the objects you're interested in and then right click. Line tangent. Now there are two possible tangents so we just want the one. Now I want to go to point mode and do a line segment from P to B and also from P to this point up here which we haven't actually established yet so let's do that next. Intersection, wait for the little circle. I don't want to call it A, I want to call it T so double click on the A and change it to T. So P, and we want this point here. This is an, another intersection point. Wait for the little circle. Select and drag the A over there. We also want this line segment as an item. So we go again to here and go from here to here. 
and we want to go from P to T. You'll notice that that is called E, if we can grab it, yes we can. That's called D and that's called B. We're going to need all these in the calculator. Now we're going to use the calculator and now notice that what we're going to need is the squared symbol. So we're going to need the on-screen keyboard. Wonderful invention. Here it is. And here you can put in all sorts of things um, to do with data or this side, a lot of mathematical notation. And here's the squared symbol, which is what we want. So we'll just park that up there and open up the calculator, which is this one. Get in the way. There we go. OK, now we want PT squared, so I'm going to write in here. Now PT is, is the object E, so I'm going to click on that and E's distance. There it is. And I want to do squared, raised to the power 2. But the text before, to make it look nice, I want to do PT. Now we want the squared, which is this one here. The space equals the space. 7.9. There it goes. So that's how you put that information on. And obviously you can do something similar for PA times PB equals 6.22. Here's an example of uh, a velocity time situation and showing that the area under the velocity time graph is the distance travelled. And we've got a variable point here which is showing you the area under the velocity time situation. And up here we've got a point that has been generated from the x value of this and the value of the area. So let's show how this works. First of all, this is a piecewise expression. V is equal to 0 up to here, 2t up to here, 4 constant, then 8 minus t down to here. So a typical out and back velocity time graph. If we double click on this, you can see from the equation entry how it works. You just put commas between each of the uh, values. And then the startup options, because it knows it's a, a piecewise equation, it's giving you the options as to where the first one begins and each intersection is followed by the last one. So it finishes at 10. The good thing about this piecewise function is that it is a function, so you can do things like work out areas and so on. Just need to put a point somewhere along here and then select, deselect the first one point, then this point. Now right click. It's quite a big menu sometimes, it's off the bottom. So don't forget the right click menu is duplicated in the object menu, which is quite useful when making videos like this. So go to create, because it doesn't fall into any of the other categories. Create area, then the area dialog. Uh, the, the one that produces a nice pretty pattern like this is Simpson's rule, but there's a general one as well. Rectangles, midpoint, trapezium, Simpson. So we'll do Simpson's with say 15 divisions. That'd be enough. So that definitely is an object in its own right. It has a value, and so does this have a value as well. So I'm going to select this point here and the area, and then I'm going to use this feature here, which produces a new point based on attributes of objects that have been selected. And you can see that the uh, x value of this point here is the x value of the of the new point and the area is the other one. So the area at the moment, but two or three, so it's going to be a point up here somewhere. And there it is. And the lovely thing about this is that as, as it moves around, so you can see that it takes characteristic shape. When the velocity is a linear function, the displacement is a quadratic. When this is constant, that's going to be a straight line. Now if you select this point and this point, we've got two points, one of which is constrained in a particular way, and the other one is a consequence of that, and that is perfect for create a locus. Off the bottom again, so object, create a locus, perfect. Are you ready? And then it's offering us from uh, minus there to that, that'll do fine, but you can change that if you like. And obviously putting on these extra lines. Uh, is an extra little bonus. But that's uh, a, a lovely way of just looking at how area and displacement and, vo and velocity and time are all linked up. Now a little exercise in introducing the concept of a scatter diagram. 
and you can see that I can move these points around and that whatever happens the line of best fit which by the way is not supposed to extend beyond its natural limits extrapolation is something you have to do with great care uh, but it shows the mean as well and it shows that the line of best fit always includes the mean so how do we do that first of all uh, grab the hand and move it down to here we don't need this so let's do axes don't show the key all right now we get to point mode and we stick some points on i'm going to hold the shift key down as i do so and so they're all selected don't put many on just enough to prove the point now right click line y on x regression line there you can see that it shows that quite nicely and you can move it around but it's very very important i think to show at this stage that the mean lies on that line so right click point mean and sure enough it does what you can also do with these points selected is right click convert those to a data set now they've changed they're just a single object one click and they all wake up double click and you can see this is the data you have created and that's where you can paste data in of course from a spreadsheet uh, to do more analysis well let's do just that here's some data from the TSM resources uh, I'm very careful when I put data up there to be sure that I know what the source of the data is and here are all the links to Berkeley University in the States that have done this research into baby weights and mother's age and so on um, so I'm going to select two columns birth weight and gestation days the feeling is that the longer the baby's in the womb the heavier it's going to be so there should be some relationship there so right click copy then we go into autograph this time of course it's 2d right click enter XY data right click paste notice the column headers have come through <coughs> that's very useful because they will then become the X and Y axis labels aha well, is this the right way around? Uh, is the gestation day or the birth weight the independent variable? I suggest it's this one, so double click. You can swap the axes very usefully, and you can also show the statistics. Now, I look a bit funny on the different aspect ratio, but that's what's happening there. You can transfer that to the results box, which is just sitting on the right hand side. You can view results box and here's all the stuff we've been doing in this session and it's all there as text which you can just copy and paste and put somewhere else let's go and find some data that's uh, well illustrated using the concept of a box plot here we've got uh, male and female life expectancies at birth for all the london boroughs so it's quite a, a, you know, one two three four five six sets of data um, let's just choose one to start to see how it works. So I'm just going to grab female all the way down to the last one, which is 82.6. Notice the column header has gone through, but not the, the bit at the very top. So we'll copy that. And we'll have a look at autograph now with a stats page. So it's got frequency up here. There's only one variable along here as opposed to the two dimensional, which has two variables. OK, so right click. We've got all that data sitting on our clipboard. Go to enter raw data and right click paste. It's as simple as that. Put it in and click OK. There we are, there it is. And it's taken the column header and told you that. So let's have a look at what we can do with it. So the box and whisker diagram is the one that we're looking at. And from raw data, that's correct. And there it is. There's an outlier, which is interesting. The usual rule, of course, one and a half times the interquartile range, and it's more than that, which is why it is an outlier. Um, if you want to, you can draw a dot plot as well underneath it, which is quite good to be able to show how that all fits. Um, we just need to rescale with the red tick. There it is. You can move this up and down if you want to. So there's the raw data, and there's our outlier, or possible outlier. And uh, notice the column header is now the uh, label of this diagram here, uh, which is why it's possible to, to do this many times and show comparative box plots. Well, that's probably about enough for part one of this video. Um, so we'll just run through the tabs again to remind you of what we've been through. This is multiple 
box plots, individual box plots with dot plot underneath, scatter diagram from large data, scatter diagram from just a few points of data to make a good teaching point, velocity time graph showing that area underneath the velocity time is displacement, and a nice bit of dynamic work on circle theorems. And then we've started off with uh, messing around with some points and Newton-Raphson and so on.